Okay, I know it's been almost two years since I last uploaded to this channel and just hear me out, okay? I have a very good explanation for you. So I went to bed one day, as I usually do, and the next morning I woke up. I wasn't in my house. I was somewhere completely different. I uh, had woken up and I looked around. I was like, where am I? I was in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. Can you believe it? It's true. I was stuck there for so long and uh, after a while I started looking around scavenging, you know, for random pieces of tech. I. I'm pretty sure I went insane. But then... But then, boys. I looked over and I saw... I saw this 3D printer right here. I saw this 3D printer on a rock. And it saved me. It brought me back. Anyway, yeah, today I'm gonna be having a look at an incredibly affordable beginner 3D printer. So, like, if you're someone like a student or someone who's just getting into 3D printing and hasn't had their first printer yet, this is a great thing for you to get. Before I start, I'd like to say thanks to 3D Printers Online for supplying me with that printer. I'm gonna remain unbiased in this review, but I will talk more about them later and obviously where you can buy the printer from them. The main things we need from the box is obviously the printer itself, which comes pre-assembled. This yellow plastic scraper. If you want the little plastic pieces that we'll get to later, the power brick, 250 grams of PLA filament, and a one gigabyte micro SD card with an adapter for plugging the card into the computer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so on the card, it looks like we have a couple of these tutorial videos and two pieces of slicing software, Cura and the basic E3D Nano software. So from what I understand, you can't just drop 3D models into the printer. You actually have to run it through slicing software that converts it into instructions the printer can read. Now I'm just gonna be using the E3D Nano software, so I'm gonna extract it here. Of course, you can also use Cura if you want to, but I prefer this one because it's gonna be much easier to use. Here I've opened Thingiverse, which is basically a 3D printing community website and a way for both beginners and experts to share ideas and STL files. There are loads of websites like this, but I really like Thingiverse since all the models are free to download and it's really easy to navigate. This search box up here lets us search the entire website for models and designs and stuff, so if I just type in triangle and hit enter, we can see loads of triangle center designs come up right here and we can just browse through them until we find one that we want to print. That one looks good. I've just saved the file here to my SD card, and if I just extract this, we should see a new folder come up called Wireframe Triangle. There it is. And here is our STL file. Now we're ready to install the slicing software, so if I go back here, I've already extracted the slicing software setup, so we also have this setup E3D Nano folder. If I just double click on this, it'll open the installer. Once setup is finished, we can just click this to launch the software. Click on finish and it should open in a second. Yep, there it is. Because I have a really big display here, you can see it's, ha it's had a bit of issues scaling the text. But that should only be a problem if you have a 4K display like me. Now, if we go back here and we go into our STL file and just drag that into here, we can see that the model is here and it's downloaded. So once you import the model, you can see we have a couple of options on the side, move, rotate, scale, and floor. If you click floor, it lets you choose what side. I don't actually really know how to use it. Uh, so if you click on the side of an object, it'll move that part to be the bottom. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm just gonna reset that. Move lets us move it around on the plane, so this is like the area that the printer can print in. Rotate would obviously rotate, yep. Yeah. And scale changes the object's size. So we can put it up to the max, or we can just reset it to default. I'm just gonna keep it like this, and then we go up here to this weird pen looking icon. If you click on that, it's got two modes, one key and custom. Now, custom opens a bunch of really weird advanced options that I have no idea how to use. Okay, so 
Instead, we're gonna go with one key, which has three different buttons, fast, standard, and optimal. So fast would basically be the quickest possible and it uses the least amount of filament. So you can see if I click on fast, 19 minutes. Optimal would be the longest and it would use the most filament, but it would have a higher print quality. So it would be like more fine, better detail. But in this case, I'm just gonna go with standard and you can see as soon as that's finished slicing that it's gonna take 24 minutes and use 0.75 meters of our filament. If you click on save TF here, it actually automatically saves it to the card. And if I go back here, it's created this G code file, which the printer is going to use to print triangle wire 1D.g code. So that is it for software. We've basically, it's all ready to print now on this little USB card thing, but we still have to set up the printer for the first time. Obviously the first thing to do is to plug the power cable into the back of the printer and then into the wall outlet. After that, we just need to mount the filament. I did end up reading the manual for this, which I should have done in the first place but turns out it's actually really easy. So if you use these plastic clips that actually look like they've been 3D printed, which is cool, we can attach the filament roll to the side of the printer and then feed it into this little plastic nozzle here. Then around the back, we move the switch into feed mode. And after a minute or so, you'll see it coming out the other side of the nozzle. Then just put the switch back into the middle and take away the scrap filament. And now I'm ready to print the 3D triangle on this little card. All we have to do is plug the card into the back of the printer, press the play button on the front, and it should start printing. Just like the slicing software said, it took about 24 minutes to print. As soon as it finished, I just used this yellow scraper to get the plastic off, then ripped off the scrap support material. So that's it, here it is, uh oh. So that is literally it. The whole process of setting up the printer for the first time and making our first 3D model, admittedly it is a bit small, but, you know, it's, it's the first thing we printed, took only 30 minutes, including printing, which is pretty cool. And I guess that's basically the selling point of this printer. It just, it just works. Like it's really portable. You can carry it around anywhere, but it still has for its size, quite a big printing plate on the bottom. And it's just one of those things where all the other printers, you'd have to spend so much longer setting up, but it just works. Here are a few other prints I made. I made this small little vase thing it doesn't really do anything, it's just for decoration purposes. I mean, I guess you could put water in it, but PLA filament is biodegradable, so I wouldn't recommend it. I made this pen holder, which I actually printed a bit smaller, so instead of holding pens, it holds USBs. I made a couple other versions of the triangle. This is a bigger one that I printed after I printed the first one. So this is like, it's just like a cool little desk toy here. Uh, what else do I have? I also have this blue bowl, which I printed using the white filament, but then I just painted over it with some acrylic paint and added a little bit of color. And now it's just a little thing on my desk that I can keep little like adapters and stuff in, you know? And the last one, this is my personal favorite because this is actually really useful. I have a micro SD card holder. You can see there's eight little micro SD holes in there. And there's also obviously the full sized SD slot for like an adapter or something. So that just stays in there. And it also has this other part, the lid, which just slides on and I can keep it in my pocket. You can put like a rubber band around it if you need to, because there's these things here, but I find it's actually a pretty tight fit on its own. Not where it's too hard to take off, but like it, it's definitely, you know, not gonna wiggle about and fall off on its own. But then to take it off, if you just grab the corners and pull this up, you can see it just comes up pretty easily when you try and take it off. So that's cool. I really, I really like this. I'll leave the links to all of the Thingiverse projects in the description below. So triangle, pen holder, vase, micro SD holder and the geometric bowl. I'll leave them all in the description. You can check them out and you can print them yourself with any 3D printer. But like genuinely after using this printer for a while and getting all these little trinkets and whatever, trinkets, who says trinkets? After getting all these little models to just keep throughout my desk that I think look, I really like this one. This one looks really cool. And obviously the card holder is a personal favorite of mine. But like, obviously you can print anything. You can go online, download models like this, or you can learn to design models yourself. It's up to you. It's really, it's a really cool thing to get into and I highly recommend it. I really like it just because it's so simple. Like I have not used any other 3D printer other than this before now. 
and it's literally just I mean you have to fiddle around with this set this up and then after you've done that you literally just plug it in and turn it on so thank you so much to 3D Printers Online for sending this printer out to me. I love it and I'm not sending it back. It's mine now. 3D Printers Online is an Australian owned online store that sells everything from 3D printers to filament to resin to 3D printer parts for repair, all that stuff. So if you're interested in 3D printing, I highly recommend you check them out. I'll also link directly to the product page for the E3D Nano in the description below. And if you use code NANO20, you can get 20% off bringing the final price down to just 200 Australian dollars. And although $200 may sound like a lot, trust me, it's not. It's, it's something like uh, 140 or something like that. 140 US dollars, which for a 3D printer is a great deal. It's even cheaper than all those like cheap Chinese sites that you see everywhere selling stuff like this. So I highly recommend you check them out. They didn't tell me what to say. They didn't tell me to say I liked it. They just told me to show you how to use it and give my honest opinion. And my honest opinion is that it's really great as a first like beginner 3D printer, which is what I need. So yeah, if you are a student or someone who's getting into 3D design or anything, I highly recommend you check this out. Product page is linked below, code NANO20 for 20% off. Great, great deal. Um, and also I, I recommend you just have a look around to the other parts of their site, have a look at some like colored filament or maybe some of the more advanced 3D printers if that's what you're into. It's up to you, but 3dprintersonline.com.au, I'll leave them linked in the video description. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy stuff like this, reviews and like tech stuff in general, hit that like button, subscribe down below if you haven't already, and of course, stay tuned for my return to YouTube. It's coming. I I will not disappear for another two months. Two, two months? Two years. Two years. I'm very tired. It's, it's very late. Where's my phone? Oh, my phone. My phone is right here, I'm using it as a camera monitor. Oh, that shows how tired I am, I don't even know where my phone is. Okay, okay, that was a lot. That was a lot to talk about in this video, but print is cool. 3D printers online, check them out below, and thanks for watching. Goodbye.